What's going on guys? Are you in the market for an underwater camera? Well, looks like you got two options, AquaView and Markham. Today, we're talking about why I chose the Markham Quest HD. Coming up next. Welcome on back guys, I'm Rush, welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, I would encourage you to drop down into the comment section, leave a comment, and be a subscriber if you're not already. With all that being said, we are reviewing the Markham Quest HD uh, 1080p underwater camera from Markham and why I chose this camera over the Aquaview HD 7i. Uh, I've been in the market for an underwater camera here uh, about two months now and I've been doing a lot of research uh, and a lot of searching for the camera that best suits my own personal needs uh, and I was leaning towards the Aquaview for the first half of it just because that's really what the majority of everyone else uses to record underwater video specifically during ice fishing. Uh, I really am a fan of the whole Aquaview setup but there's a few things that set this camera apart that the Aquaview just cannot compete on. Okay uh, and as I'm sure a lot of you are already aware both Markham and Aquaview have a lot of the same similar characteristics. Okay they both have the seven inch uh, screen they both are going to give you water depth, battery life, and direction. Uh, and those are some pretty big key features that if you don't have, you wish you had. Uh, both units do have that same capability and they do have uh, decent battery life. Uh, and the actual LCD screens are both very high quality screens. Uh, so really in all those categories, it, it's a toss up. But the two categories that really set this apart from the AquaView are camera quality and overall battery life. Uh, those are two categories that really pursued or persuade myself to go ahead and make the purchase of the Markham. Uh, this is not a paid advertising. I did purchase this with my money. So no part of this review is paid for by Markham or AquaView or any of those other brands. This is personal opinion, personal preference, all that good jazz with a great little review. So head on down, hit the subscribe button guys. Let's go. With all that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this unit, guys. Uh, this unit is a beautiful little unit. Uh, this is the Quest HD. And like I said, the thing that really sets it apart to me is uh, the camera. But before that, we're gonna kinda break down the unit, see how it comes. This is not like your regular unboxing. I had the dude at Shields actually bust this one out of the package along with the VS825 SD. Uh, they had two sales. The VS825, that's a lot of words, uh, was on sale for $600. It did come with a free uh, camera panner, but for a reason. Uh, the camera on that is only a 720p, and this is a 1080p camera. And the difference really is astonishing. I had him open up this underwater camera and the VS825 and put them side by side and the cameras were just night and day. Uh, the 1080p camera truly does blow the competition out of the water, guys. The clarity is unmatched and the sharpness is unmatched. The only way that I could describe that difference or that comparison is go to this video and click on the settings button and change from 1080 to 720, okay? I wish I had another camera here to demonstrate this, but that's the only way that I could truly uh, let you guys experience that, is change your actual camera settings on this video from 1080 to 720. That's the difference between this unit and the Aquaviews, because even the high-end Aquaview HD 10i Pro is only a 720 HD definition, which is good, but it's not this. This beats that every time, all the time. No doubt, no questions. There's no way a 720p camera could possibly outproduce a 1080p camera. This is a Sony HAD2 camera. I'm pretty sure they've had this same camera set up for a, for a while now. They just upgraded to 1080p, which really does make the world a difference, guys. Uh, so with that being said, let's kind of break down the unit here. Uh, at the store, the kid didn't really know how to fold the screen down, but luckily in the instructions it, it tells you you actually have to undo these screws and like a normal unit you would just fold the monitor up and down but with this unit you press in on the screws 
and it folds down and it folds up. Uh, kind of cool little mechanism there. Uh, so if you do buy it, don't start just forcing the son of a bitch up and down because you will break it. With that being said, the carrying case for it actually is pretty cool. Uh, I'll kind of fold it up and down here. When it's fully up and you're using it, it actually protects everything, even the back of the camera. It's got a little fold here that protects the HDMI out along with the power and the video for the actual head unit itself. Uh, on the back here is a sun sunscreen visor. It has the uh, tape for the Velcro and it actually goes up and around the monitor like so. I'll kind of pull this back for you guys. I'll show you on this one right here. Here's the sunscreen. It's got this white tape of Velcro. Peel that off, stick the Velcro on the monitor, and then from, from there you stick the hood on and you can control it. Uh, pretty nice little hood. It's covered on three sides. Uh, the sides and the top, so you're going to get great sunscreen coverage. Uh, I know on really, really bright days, on the ice, it gets super bright. Uh, sometimes even sunglasses don't do enough job of deflecting the sun. So it does get quite bright out there, and you will need to be able to see this unit in the brightest of sun. And I believe this will help a lot. So I do know the Aquaview does come with a sunshade already on it but it only covers the top. I'm not quite sure if it has sides or not. I do know this, though, will work great. Have not put it on, but I do fear that the Velcro will not stick. We'll see, uh, I might do a video update on that exact thing, but we'll get to that later. Back to this guy. This unit folds up the back. It's even got a little pouch back here. You can put things, that's actually where the sunscreen goes, right there. This pack folds up and out. It's got two little strings here that you lift it down. And out comes the battery compartment. Uh, you have the actual camera right here. There she is. Uh, it's your standard Markham camera. It does come with the tail fin. Uh, I believe that's upstairs right now, but the tail fin does clip on the back and you can adjust the angle of the camera. The LEDs in front uh, are pretty bright. I will turn them on here in a second after we're done going through the back side here. Uh, we do have the spool for the line, the cable, 75 feet of it. Uh, I have heard a few reviews of people not liking how they have it set up here. I can see why because it's a struggle for me to get everything back into this little compartment box. Uh, it is a tight fit, but it does fit. Probably not as good as the Aquaview, but that's neither here nor there. Like I said, it does just kind of fold in, and the camera does sit right there. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how the company expects you to do it like that every time, especially when ice builds up and, you know, winter happens. Uh, but the battery is right here. Uh, the charger does come... The charger does come with a piggyback system, so you can actually attach the charger right to the cables and the cables piggyback off the charger so you don't ever actually have to unplug the charger. It can always stay attached and in the actual console. Um, I lost the charger for, for my Hummingbird unit so I charge both, both the batteries off this cable. So I leave it unattached. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, so now that we got the storage kind of reviewed, we are going to, oh shoot, we are going to go over the actual camera itself. I'll pull it that out just like that. And like I said guys, once you have the camera out and the line out, uh, the, the unit does fold up pretty nice. Um, like I said, the, the whole thing is protected, so if you were in a blizzard or whatever, uh, the, the battery systems and the electronics are covered to an extent. Uh, I'm sure, you know, if you left it out for weeks and months, there would be problems, but for the most part, it is covered. And the screen itself is waterproof, splash proof, all the good things. So, and if, if we ever want to move the screen up and down, we just push in on the screws and adjust. Um, battery is fully charged. We are going to go ahead and turn her on. 
I'm not quite sure how the view on this monitor is going to be. Unfortunately, that's all blown out. But if you guys can see that at all, it is a pretty good picture. Once again, for underwater cameras, they are not the greatest cameras, okay? It's kind of like a trail camera, uh, except not as advanced. Uh, because these get submerged, they're electronics in water. Uh, so I, I can understand how we don't have a 4K underwater camera yet, just because it's a lot to put into an underwater application. But the 1080p camera truly is nice. Uh, we also have the LED lights. Right here on front, there's a little button and they pop on. Uh, it is pretty bright right now, so you're not gonna see the full effect of this. You know what, hold on. Nah, I ain't turned the lights off, it's too much work. But the LEDs are pretty bright. I do have concerns of uh, murky, dark water in the middle of the night. Not quite sure how well those LEDs are really gonna play out. I do know that Aquaview came out with a uh, of a flashlight or a light that you can attach underneath their camera. I'm not really sure if it's compatible with this, but it is, it's a great idea because it's hard to pack a bunch of light onto this camera. Uh, I can see that, uh, but hopefully it shouldn't be too big of a problem. If it is, you guys will know. Um, so yeah, that's that for the camera. Um, also on this little front panel here, there is Fahrenheit and Celsius along with you can change the on-screen on screen displays of the actual unit. You can take on and off the direction, water temp, and uh, depth of the actual camera itself. So that is kind of cool. Uh, you know, overall great unit, guys. Like I said, the main reason that I purchased this unit was because of the 1080p camera because I will be recording film from this actual unit. So I wanted the best camera in class possible. Uh, Markham does offer the best camera, hands down, because 720 just cannot compete. I don't care how awesome your display is, how HD it is, it's 720p. It just does not compete. It's like watching 1080p compared to 4K. There's no comparison. Uh, so you will get unmatched clarity, clearness, and sharpness with this unit. Uh, like I said, I am intrigued to see how well it actually works. Uh, hopefully we will have ice here in Montana in the next uh, three to five days, like good fishable ice throughout the entire state. So uh, pray for good ice and I will bring you guys underwater footage of this actual unit once we get onto the ice and into it. So this is just a video I wanted to kind of go over about the actual unit, the perks of buying this unit and why I bought this unit over the Aquaview. Uh, and hope you guys enjoyed this fun video for me to make. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, drop down in the comments below, guys. Let me know what's going on. And uh, hope you have a great day, and we'll see you on the ice.